Well, good morning, good evening, good afternoon, or good night, whenever you're joining us for this lecture on the two standards. Now, you've already done an assignment where you looked at your talents, and you discovered, hopefully, that talents are the key to having a vocation, and that your talents are essentially the toolkit God gives each and every one of us, and we can choose to use that toolkit to build the life that is most of ser in service to God. And so what we, we want to do when we have a vocation is that's that idea of using our talents to serve others and to serve God. So having looked at our talents and looking at the fact that we can use our talents to serve God, we're going to turn our attention to what Ignatius calls the two standards, or the way that Jesus tries to influence our lives versus the way that Satan tries to influence our lives. And so for Jesus, the standard is poverty that leads to humiliations, which leads ultimately to humility. And I know at first glance this can sound like super unappealing. Um, and that's the sinfulness in us, because we get caught up in this, and we see this pattern as only loss, when really this pattern, I think, leads ultimately to freedom. So, Jesus' standard is about humility. If Jesus is our example in life, and we have to know that the God-man empties himself, the distance between a God and a human being is immense, and for us, really unfathomable. And so for God to empty himself and become a human being, taking on a tremendous level of poverty and humiliations, and ultimately we see in Jesus' own life, because he has embraced that, he is humble. Right, we, and, and St. Paul reminds us of this when he says that he emptied himself by assuming the form of a slave, taking on the likeness of men. Brackley call, calls this same process downward mobility. And the idea behind downward mobility is that we actively try to work against our selfish desires. There's going to always be this idea that we have to have more, that if we don't take care of ourselves first, that somehow God will forget about us and doesn't understand and know what we need and has, has given us all we need naturally, that we are selfish. We want more, and often we want just because someone else has it. And so we have to actively work against those selfish desires. And we do that because by trying to imitate the life of Jesus. And if you're going to be a Christian, I think you have to say that Jesus is the model, which means going to the cross, and it means a lot of sacrifice in order to not be tied down by the selfish nature that leads ultimately to sin and death. So the second way of proceeding, or the second standard, is the standard of Satan. And for Ignatius, the pattern usually follows riches to honors to pride. And the thing here to notice is that all of these things are about me first, and they tend, they are a, they're the result of selfish desire. That if we, if we think that we deserve more than others, and we are better than others, we ultimately get to a point where we are the only thing in the universe, and the only thing that matters. And that leads us to a very tiny, isolating life. And I think ultimately, if we think about what hell must really mean, it is total separation from God and the result of living an entirely selfish existence to the point where there is nothing else in the universe. And so in order to do this, remember, truth is transparent. Goodness is transparent. You don't have to hide anything. You're not afraid of anything when you're, when you're following the good path. And so Satan has to use deception. And the way Satan will use deception is largely through the, what Brackley calls upward mobility. That, that, that thing in us that says we have to constantly be better and, and more important than our neighbors, trying to get the bigger car, the bigger house, the more important job, the better sending our kids to the better private school, the, and, and ultimately the better university. And that constant desire to fill all of these needs is what, what leads us ultimately to the selfish results that get, that get us to the standard of Satan. So we have those same talents, but what is going to happen with the deception is rather than using them selflessly, we're going to use them selfishly, and we're going to focus those talents on, on us rather than offering them for the good of the world. Fortunately, Ignatius gives us some ways in which we can catch the pattern of deception. Now, 
the word deception means that we are feeling consolation. And that also means that the evil spirit can give us consolation, which can be a really weird thing. And it's important to note that the consolation is real. Those feelings that we get when we feel closer to God can be caused by the evil spirit. And that doesn't mean that they are not truly consolation, consoling. So, but there are some ways that the evil spirit can get in on that process and try to lead us back towards those selfish path of riches to honors to pride. So the first thing we need to do is to pay attention to the process. This is, a, this is going to take place over several steps, and this is why our daily exam is so important, to look back over our day, to see where we found God, and to start to see, are we noticing desolation starting to creep in to our daily experience? And we have to pay attention to the process of that. It might take us three, four days, a week, a month, a year, to see how this process unfolds. And so we have to constantly be vigilant. The second thing we want to do is we want to look out for that pattern of riches, honors, and pride. We're going to, at some point along the path, if you're going to be deceived, you're going to take that poverty to humiliations to humility and that sacrificial desire that, that human beings naturally have and start to turn that onto, well, I don't really need to do this. I, I'm better. I'm separate. I'm different. And somehow that's going to start to turn ourselves into this pattern that ultimately leads us to pride. And so when we're in consolation, we want to examine the entire chain of those thoughts in our consolations. That because what started out as a good and holy desire could could can become corrupted along the way, either in the consolation itself or basking in the afterglow of feeling a experience of increase of hope, faith, and love. We can then, in, in that euphoria, not pay attention and start to allow ourselves to be deceived. And finally, remember who our model is. It's Jesus Christ. And so at the end of the day, that silly little bracelet, what would Jesus do, is a great reminder. If we're going to follow the path of true consolation and, and follow the standard of Jesus, we want to be making decisions and mimicking Jesus's own path in life. And if you can come to the conclusion that this is not what Jesus would do, then you know you've identified the desolation and you've and you've you've highlighted the deception. And once it's highlighted, you can actively take steps to ignore it because you know it's a lie. Deception is always a lie. It only works if you don't know you're being deceived. What you're going to be doing now is looking at some of those ways that your own talents can be used to deceive you and turn and and be sources of temptation away from the path of God. Good luck.